شكرا يا محمود وانا بشكر محمود انه دعاني اني اتكلم معاكم اليوم رح نحكي عن في اس ديز ان ادلتس كم مين في فلو والله هون فلوز فلوز كم واحد؟ في حوالي اربعه خمسه ارفعوا ارفعوا اه اوه اوكي تمام تمام يعني انا وظيفتي بعد هاي المحاضره اني اتاكد اني اخلص الفي اس ديز من براثن السيرجنز اند ذا ادلت كارديولوجيست مايند اوف كلوزنج ذي اس ديز انا صار لي 18 سنه في البلد وماشي بال 19 ف موسو انا لازم اسرع يا محمود لاني عارف انك انت ضد التايم. موسو سيرجنز وود لايك تو كلوز سمول في اس ديز فانا اي جست وونت تو كونسنتريت اون وات ار ذا انديكيشنز اوف كلوجر اوف في اس ديز نوت افري في اس دي نيدز كلوجر سو ليتس ووك ثرو ذوز سلايدز اند ذن وي كان ريتش ا كونكلوجن ان شاء الله. سو ابروكسيمتلي ذير از 1 مليون ادلتس وذ كونجينيتال هارت ديزيز ان ذا يو اس 20,000 افري يير ريتشز ادلتس هود with congenital heart disease. Cardiologists must have detailed knowledge of congenital heart disease, both repaired and unrepaired. Clearly define each patient's surgical and corrective procedure. So as my colleague, Dr. Awni said, yeah, the atrial septal defect ranks second, and depending on the study, between six and 10%. However, VSD ranks first between 25 and 30% of all congenital heart disease. VSD, ASD, PDA, complete AV canal, AP window, coronary fistula, those are all non-cyanotic. Why would I emphasize this? Because some people have some confusion of can a VSD, would a VSD always cause cyanosis? The answer is not, unless you reach Eisenmenger phenomena, which is rare, but it happens. So yes, VSD causes left to right shunt, and it's a non-cyanotic congenital heart disease. Let's talk about VSD in adults. VSDs were first clinically described in 1879 by Roger. Until today, some people would like to call small VSDs the Roger VSDs. Ventricular septal defect is very common congenital heart defects in children, but due to spontaneous closure and <coughs> VSDs, and surgical closure, and maybe sometimes device closure, it's less commonly encountered in adults. And that's why I'm not surprised in no when any adult cardiologist or surgeon reaches or finds a VSD patient, they want to close it because they don't see as much VSDs and the murmur is loud, so it's scary for everyone. About one third of patients with VSD initially managed medically required surgical intervention later in life. So the location for VSDs is, there are four types of VSDs. The most common, which is perimembranous, or if you want to call it membranous, is fine with me. It's between the tricuspid valve, the right ventricular lateral free wall. This is the aortic, uh, sorry, this is the pulmonary valve, and the aortic valve is coming right behind it. This is the tricuspid valve, so this is the area between the tricuspid the aortic valve. 70% of VSDs are membranous VSDs. Outlet is the one that is subpulmonic, is called outlet, it's 5 to 7%. High, more common in Asian population, is probably 30%. Inlet VSD is really rare, it's between the tricuspid and the mitral valve. Muscular VSD, which has a very high spontaneous closure rate, is around 20%. First, please remember that the outlet VSD is some pulmonic VSDs, they're more common in Asians, around 30%. In our area, it's very rare. I don't encounter subpulmonic VSDs as much. Classification according to the size. الزمنات كانوا يعتمدوا على comparing VSD size to the aortic annulus and I don't use that uh, um, classification. Any VSD less than 4 millimeters is considered as small. Any VSD 4 to 6 millimeters is medium. Anything above 6 is 7. Sometimes I do not rely a جماعة على diameter. I rely, I rely on the manifestations by the heart or clinical. Any VSD that has a loud murmur and no LV dilatation is small. Any VSD with no pulmonary hypertension but LV dilatation is medium in size. Any VSD with congestive heart failure and pulmonary hypertension, this is large. <laughs> symptoms depend on shunts, if you have small, medium, or large shunts. So symptoms with VSDs that are small, 
or not, or even little. Some symptoms, probably mild tachypnea when you have a medium-sized VSD, and obvious patients with congestive heart failure when they have a large shunt. Your pulmonary vascular bed does not get affected if you have a small VSD, but if you have a medium-sized VSD, may be affected, but if you have a large VSD, your pulmonary vascular bed will definitely be affected. So what is the pathology? It all depends on the VSD size. Uh, so the pressure difference between the LV and RV, and Dr. Mustafa, we rely a lot on measuring PA pressure on the VSD gradient. Yes, TR sometimes can help, but if you don't have TR, your VSD gradient is very helpful to assess your PA pressure. So you measure your right arm pressure and then get a VSD gradient from the, your echo, and then you will be able to tell if you have a normal PA pressure or not uh, with your VSD patient. So what happens with your hemodynamics when you have a VSD? You have an increased volume of blood in your pulmonary circulation that leads to an enlarged left atrium and an enlarged left ventricle. So in general, VSDs that are significant would lead to a significant volume overload. So VSDs and PDAs are volume overload patients. However, ASDs would lead to a right-sided volume overload. So that leads to an aorta that's ejecting less blood and obviously a systemic circulation insufficiency. But if you have a more VSD shunt that leads to an elevated volume and obviously pressure which is more significant and then you have more PA congestion and pulmonary plethora. What are the symptoms? If your VSD is small, usually no symptoms. But if you have a medium to large VSDs, usually your patient is symptomatic. With adult cardiology, you will not reach, or you will not have patients that will have symptoms when they are adults. Usually they are symptomatic in younger age, and then they will get managed at a much earlier age, except if we are getting patients from countries that are really under embargo, and they have symptoms at a much later age. So when you have a pulmonary plethora, you have frequent chest infections, you don't see it as much, however, if you have a pulmonary plethora, your patient is tachypnic, so there is failure to thrive, hadur of mardan, al-azhar min al-marda little tshufuhum, failure to thrive, poor weight gain, feeding, difficulty, fatigue, shortness of breath, and sweating. However, if you have Eisenmenger phenomena, you have severe cyanosis, and larger lesions, and definitely accentuated and single P2. I have never seen hoarseness from a dilated main pulmonary artery due to a large VSD. This is the most important slide. If anyone wants to hear anything from this presentation, just by this slide, it's fine with me. What are the indications of closure of VSDs? These are the eight indications of closure of VSDs. The first three, don't think about them a lot. Because they don't have to be concerned with you as an adult cardiologist. We have to be concerned with us. Severe congestive heart failure, this usually in babies. And then we need to take action at this age. Failure to thrive is also another main indication for VSD closure and pulmonary hypertension. These three indications are the indications of VSD closure in the first six to 12 months of life. The other five indications are the indications you will see in your practice as adult cardiologist. The number one indication, and that's the reason why I convince my families, it's aortic insufficiency. This is the number one indication for VSD closure in adults. Double chambered right ventricle is a common underestimated um, reason for closure of VSDs. Subaortic membrane is rare, probably one to two percent. Significant LV volume overload and mitral regurg is another main indication. Of course, the last indication is infective endocarditis. Even though with a small VSD and you're not having any of those, but you have infective endocarditis an indication for closure. What are the VSD closure options? It's either surgery or device closure. With surgical, you have mid-sternotomy, but recently, over the past several years, in Europe more than the US, they are using the endoscopic technique. And I have contacted a friend of mine that we are doing now ASD uh, endoscopic closure, and he told me they can even close VSDs endoscopically with a subarular incision using scopes without the needing for sternotomy. Of course, they use patch. 
uh, the patches they use it either is either cortex or dacron patches or sometimes pericardial so the three types can be used or sometimes if the VSD is really small they can use the suture closure let's talk about the devices this the devices um, the newer modalities of devices came out in probably 1988 uh, or 99 however it was FDA approved in 2001 but other previous devices that did not survive were in the uh, 80s and 90s. It's a bit difficult technique, and with a perimembranous device, there is a high chance of pacemaker placement. This is the surgical approach. And this is the surgeon's view. Uh, this is the right atrium uh, uh, free wall is being open. This is the tricuspid valve. This is a large membranous VSD. And I actually put in this so you can see this is the AV node that the surgeons do not see. And the chances while they are doing the patch closure of hitting the uh, uh, or coming across the AV node is high. So probably there is a 2 to 3%. I wrote here 1 to 2 depending on the study of complete heart block meeting a pacemaker. Again, they also sometimes do repair of the aortic valve uh, and they suspend the cusps with some sutures and prejudice sutures. So this is something they can do. These are the devices that are uh, probably available that are most commonly used for VSD closure. And for you guys as adults, this is probably of importance, which is the post-MI VSD device. It has a larger waist to accommodate for the thicker septum. This is the muscular device, and this is the eccentric device, uh, the perimembranous uh, VSD device. Um, أنا بتكلم مع زيادة حجازي اليوم لأنه في تغيير كبير على ال VSD device closure. قلت له زياد what's your latest recommendations? He said we continue to do VSD device closure. Muscular is definitely because the chances of developing complete heart block is less. They do post MI VSD. We have not done it yet. None of our colleagues has referred any patient to me. At least I don't know if Howie has has done it. Uh, however, the talk now is more regarding the perimembranous device. In 2007, the Europeans reported that there is a 7% chance of complete heart block, so people shied away. And I was here, we had 10 with each other in 2007. And when the paper came out on complete heart block, of course, the two things, in total 12, we stopped using the perimembranous device until they modify the device itself. They, there is a talk now about the two, the perimembranous device two, the waste itself is less um, uh, dense with material, so the compression against the AV node is less, but still we haven't seen it in the market. For, uh, this is still, I don't use perimembranous device uh, closure at all. So let's talk briefly, I have maybe two, three minutes to tell you about the surgical outcome that people have been talking about in the past probably 10, 15 years. This study came out from Mayo Clinic they studied the adult patients who have had VSD closure in 50 years, since 1958 to 2008. They studied 46 patients. They had the first pump case in 1953 in Minnesota. They have an old registry uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, pump cases. As if you can take a look at this table, the indications for surgery, the number one indication was aortic regurg. And the second important one was left ventricular dilatation. Pulmonary hypertension is number three, and endocarditis was number four. Uh, there were two patients only in the 50s, but then the number grew up as people became better with surgery. Uh, larger numbers were in the 90s and the year 2000. Um, the, this is an important slide. Basta ulkum inno, abnil amaliyya aortic regurg was mild, moderate, and severe on those patients. Early post-op, معظم moderate صار mild, ولكن late after surgery, كثير من aortic leak صار أسوأ. So please prepare your patients. In the surgeons, they will do a good job for early post-op period. إنه يروح. وأنا بشوفه بال بصراحة بالpractice تبعه. جراح بيكون مضبط الفالف والأمور تمام. بعد بعد سنتين ثلاثة بتلاقي aortic leak. And this has been reported in other people's experience. Tricuspid valve is a little bit more different than aortic leak. Usually, a leak fill a tricuspid valve is more before, and then it gets really better 
uh, early and uh, late post-operative. Um, let's not talk about the late outcomes, really nothing significant. There is zero or like only 3% required permanent pacemakers. Mortality is really low, two out of the 40 patients. Uh, small residual VSDs, some arrhythmias, but no significant um, uh, late consequences. The survival after VSD closure versus the normal population was really uh, uh, the same with no statistical significance, which means that if you close VSD patients, they lead a normal lifespan. Let's talk a couple of slides only about Eisenmenger, so you might face this in your practice which is the final common pathway of all significant left to right shunt in which unrestricted انا حطيت تحت خطه بالاحمر unrestricted حتى ما حدا يفكر بالايزنمنجر with a small VSD pulmonary blood flow leads to pulmonary vascular occlusive disease بعتقد بحب استخدم انا المعلمين تبعوني اللي علموني كانوا يحبوا يستخدموا pulmonary vascular occlusive disease اكثر من ايزنمنجر بس في الاردن بيستخدموا اكثر ايزنمنجر which is okay and then that leads to a right to left shunting with cyanosis developing and clubbing sometimes. Generally, you need a QPQS of two to one and more to lead into Eisenmenger or pulmonary vascular occlusive disease. ما راح اضيع وقتكم بصراحة على الباثولوجي، أول ما رجعت من الستيتس ببداياتنا كان يجينا كثير مرضى عراقيين يمنيين وليبيين وسوريين مش معقول لهم سيرجري، كانوا الباثولوجيست ما يعرف يقرأوا أحيانا من اللونج بايوسي اللي ناخذها ف I'm not gonna focus on this. However, the survival curve for Eisenmenger is really terrible. You can see that the survival is really bad. Um, يعني probably half of them will probably reach 40 45. Complications coagulopathy, brain abscess, regular microemboli, airway hemorrhages. The treatment really symptomatic, just phlebotomies. Rule out correctable disease, that's very important. And please, this is a very important advice. Once diagnosis is established, avoid <coughs> aggressive testing. There is a risk that he might die of anesthesia or might die of the procedure itself. So please just accept the fact that he is not operable. Now, recent advances has happened with Bozentan and Sildenafil. This is something to think about. And then always the definitive answer is heart lung transplant, which is not available here. Maybe alhamdulillah with heart transplant coming, maybe one day we'll have heart lung transplant. Prostacycline is extremely expensive and also not available in Jordan. One last slide, Ya Mahmoud, this is the last slide, I promise. In SPU prophylaxis, so banana and adult cardiologists will face this in, in their practice. It's not indicated more than six months after surgical closure and no residual shunt. Is the intermittent VSD sucker done ma salami bas bidak situhur? Indicated in small VSDs in certain dental procedures if you have if you have extensive gingival work. However, if you have any for index small VSDs, some people say you don't need, which is the recommendation by 2007. However, most of us, the pediatric cardiology community, we do not recognize the 2007 recommendation and we tell families to give the patients that are younger. يعني أنا إذا تسألوني أي حدا عنده VSD I will give them SP prophylaxis for any dental procedure because it's only one single dose one hour before dental appointment. The new thing that I like اللي هو not indicated in GU or GI tract procedures فأنا I circumcise, circumcise my children with small VSDs without SP prophylaxis and the dose for adults just as a reminder is two grams one hour before the procedure. شكرا لكم. <تصفيق> 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 <تصفيق>